Hi everyone, today we are talking about Weeshed by Kate Davies. I'm here with Linda Jennings from Color Storms Yarn and I am Valerie, the Knitting Fairy Godmother. And today we're starting chapter two, which is titled Feeling Uninspired. I loved this chapter, that very first paragraph. I have so many things underlined and so many things noted. What did you think? It's so interesting to me. I sort of went on a geography um, fixation or exploration. I learned that Scotland is at the 54th latitude north. And the most north I've lived is at 47. And definitely I have experienced what she was talking about with the seasonal depression situation um even for me living at the 47th latitude it was very difficult <laughs> yeah it was nice that she was so frank about her um seasonal depression and so interesting the solution that she found right that that very practical tools creative detail mm -hmm. looking she talks a lot about looking at the tiny little surroundings um and that whole thing about the bracken right how much she hates bracken i could totally relate to that because i pick poke berries for um dyeing my yarn and often they get surrounded by thorns as the summer goes on these little um, bushes just this little wild thorny thing surrounds it and if i don't keep up with it through the winter if i come across a brand new patch it can be just covered with this thorny stuff and it makes the pokeberries almost impossible to get to so i could definitely try thinking about them in a different way, try to find something beautiful about them. Although I ended up kind of going in a different direction with that. I, I started a list of all the things that I hate in life. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do the opposite. Okay. <laughs> well, our one of our assignments is to write like an essay about something like your least favorite color or um, something you don't like. Mm hmm um yeah 500 words or a short poem following your reflection on your least favorite color and i sort of brought in that to to think well may, maybe i could rather than writing about my least favorite color maybe i'd like to write it about my least favorite thing that i have to deal with in life like pokeberry thistles or pokeberry thorny things and i'm like well i'll make a list of all the things i really don't like about my life and pick one <laughs> yeah, for me, the color was hard because I love all colors. And I can say that very confidently. And that's an honest statement. I don't have like a natural dislike of any one particular color because I've learned that colors play together. And even if I don't like a color by itself, it might be that pop that you need to make the color you love shine. And so I was pondering that idea of like disliking a color because I don't really feel like that. I don't have that right now. And thinking about something else in a different world that I don't like is a better, that's going to be easier for me to, to think about and talk about. Yeah, I just added a neighboring thorny bushes to the poke berry, <laughs> my list of things I don't like. But <gasps> oh. yeah, she, she goes into this whole thing about why don't you like, why might you not like um, light green? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just bought a yarn of beautiful sock yarn of light green. That's not my least favorite color. But um, she does have an exercise in there about picking your least favorite colorway and, and knitting this um, feral pattern, which I've started. And 
it's really fascinating to knit with a whole group of ugly colors and truly I agree with her they are really ugly colors and I thought maybe after I finish one repeat of the pattern it might be interesting just to change one color and see if I can improve it with just one color change anyway I yeah picking colors and knitting to me is it's a skill that I'm working on and it is it is a skill like you you can improve your color choices and I've done some independent study ex color exercises where I take the assignment and I do it sort of like to what you're saying picking colors and just knitting a swatch and seeing what happens and it doesn't come naturally. I really have to work at it and practice it. And I get really bad results. And that's information yeah. <laughs> and part of the learning process. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I I wrote in this sort of genre of um, trying to find something nice about something unpleasant like the bracken. Mm -hmm. I did think of something, I have a little tiny story about how something obnoxious turned into something less obnoxious. <laughs> so I, I have four children that have all grown up now, but I can remember that one of my frustrating things about being a mom was that no matter how many times I taught them and schooled them and trained them, they always still didn't weren't very good at putting away the food or putting dishes away. So for example, if they made their own lunch, mm -hmm. they often made their own breakfast and lunch and snack, and then not put the food away. They'd make a sandwich and then not put the bread and the other stuff away where they might put it away, but then they leave the dishes all over the house. I don't know why I was not very good at teaching them to not do this. <laughs> One day, boom, light bulb. Hey, the fact that they don't put things away means I know now what they had for lunch. Oh, now I know what they had for breakfast. Oh, I can tell what they had for lunch by what's left on that dish. That was really helpful information as they were teenagers and so on. I could detect, uh-huh. Okay, they had this and this and this, therefore, maybe I'll make sure they eat this and this at dinner. Or I could make adjustments. I could kind of keep a little bit of a beat on what they were consuming, what their favorite foods were, what to be sure I bought more of at the store. And so mm. suddenly this annoying, obnoxious thing that I wasn't very good at teaching, I could never seem to fix it. I still can't. Bethany still is not great at this and she's my last kid and she's 21 and I still haven't figured out how to train this skill um <laughs> but it just made the whole thing a little bit less obnoxious and I remember when I was responsible for the whole family's meals and it was so stressful because it was fickle. One day they loved something. The next day it was the worst thing they'd ever eaten. <laughs> like, it was the exact same recipe. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Some days I made enough food. Other days I made not enough. And, you know, it was, it was really, really hard. Yeah. And they probably weren't very appreciative of all your effort, right? I feel like I cooked for six years straight, but you know, that's, I mean, that was a family decision that was important for us to eat dinner together. And I had to make it work. Like it took a lot of mental and physical <laughs> energy for me. Um, yeah. Well, there certainly is a lot of meat in this chapter and more to be um, discovered. Um, so I hope you all will come and join us next time and really enjoy the, um, the whole thought of uh, looking at the life around you and seeing 
um, appreciating the little details in your surroundings and, and maybe think about them differently if you can. So yeah, uh, those sparks of creativity, keep them going. Bye everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week. See you next time. Bye-bye.